Hey, good morning, guys. All right, hey, before we get started, just a few announcements for you. Uh, one, youth group this week, uh, high school group still on Monday night, Wednesday, uh, we still have middle school group. Here's how it's gonna work. Uh, it's gonna be live on Zoom. So if you're in high school, we're gonna Zoom in from 7.30 to 8.30 on Monday night. If you are in uh, middle school, we are going to Zoom in on Wednesday uh, from 6.30 to 7.30. The, uh, where you can find that is on the church website, cornerstonehome.org backslash youth. At the very bottom of the page is our uh, calendar. If you click on the calendar, there's gonna be an invite on the youth group link. So just click that invite and that'll help you uh, get into the Zoom. And then during the week, what we've done is we've set up on Google Hangouts, uh, basically a chat room where we can talk throughout the week. So uh, check into that. In order to get on to uh, Google Hangouts, which by the way, both for uh, Zoom and Hangouts, you don't have to have an app or a smartphone. You can do it straight from your desktop. Uh, so at the right above the calendar on the youth page, there are some links, one to our Instagram account, one to our Facebook page, and then there's two Google Hangout icons, one for middle school, one for high school. Uh, if you click on those, that'll take you directly into uh, the link for uh, our chat rooms, all right? Uh, let's see here, other thing is, uh, today our auction goes live so if you haven't already sent in your videos I need those as soon as you get those uh, and then also or as soon as you can make them and then if you haven't submitted something yet for the auction can you please get that to me as soon as possible so we can get that up on the auction page remember everything that uh, that your item makes from the raffle goes 100% into your uh, personal scholarship account for camp. So take care of that. And then uh, you can find out all the information on, uh, at cornerstonehome.org backslash auction. That'll be our landing page where everything will go out from. And then I will also uh, make available to you guys a, uh, uh, I don't know, a page, uh, an email to let you know about how to get the word out uh, to everybody, all right? so. Here we go, uh, question of the day. Uh, so here's the question. Who bugs you most in life? Who is that most irritating person? Uh, it's probably your siblings at this point because you've been locked up with them for a week. But whoever it is, think about it. You can say it back to me right now. I can't hear you, but um, that's cool. Yeah, send it in to me. Uh, and then, but think about that person because we're gonna be, uh, learning how to love them better uh, in our message this morning. So let's pray before we get started. God, thank you for this morning. Uh, thank you for the uh, for uh, giving us technology and media so that we can still come together, still do church together. Even though we're separate, we're still together. And so God, I just thank you for that. I pray for uh, our doctors and nurses uh, who are on the front line uh, serving us. God, I also pray for our families that they all are uh, staying safe and that they're uh, following the precautions so that uh, our doctors and nurses uh, can do their job better. Um, just pray for our country. Uh, pray for the world as we fight through this. And so, God, be with our, uh, our message this morning. May your truth be known and spoken and heard and understood. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, I got a story for you. When Abraham Lincoln was a lawyer in Springfield, Illinois, a wealthy man asked him to take up a lawsuit against a poor guy who owed him $2.50. At first, Lincoln hesitated and wasn't gonna take the case, but then he thought about it and came up with a plan. He told the guy, sure, I'll take the case, but it's gonna cost you $10 in order to sue this guy for $2.50. Immediately, the guy said, done, uh, and hired Abraham Lincoln to be the lawyer in order to sue this guy for $250. Uh, the guy paid him $10 cash up front. Abraham Lincoln quickly went, over, went and found the guy that owed him the money, and he told him, I'll pay you 
$5 in order to settle the case and pay the guy that you owe $250. So in the end, uh, the guy being sued made $2.50 and resolved his debt. Abraham Lincoln made $5 and the guy got his $250 back at a rate of $10. All right, we all act like this sometimes because let's be honest, we're all a little bit selfish. We love us some us. The love of self causes us to be quick to react uh, when we think somebody has wronged us or treated us unfairly. People will jump from one group of friends to the next or from church to church or, church to church or job to job or relationship to relationship claiming that they've been wrong. Uh, I'm sure in many of the cases, they actually were wrong. But what is the cost of being right? Paul tells us in Philippians chapter 4, verse 5, Let everyone see that you are gentle and kind. The Lord is coming soon. Other translations say, Let your graciousness be known to everyone. Uh, let your gentleness be evident to all. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Let everyone see you are considerate in all you do. The message puts it this way. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side, working with them, not against them. Help them see that the master is about to arrive. I also read it somewhere else put this way. Right is wrong when we insist on our rights and do not practice forbearance. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. Right is wrong when we insist on our rights and do not practice forbearance. Okay, it's a big word. It's not one that we normally use. So here's the first question. What is forbearance? The dictionary defines forbearance as a refraining from the enforcement of something that is due. Uh, often the Greek word in which this comes from is translated as gentle, but it means actually a little bit more than that. Uh, the deeper meaning would be acting in a way that is opposite of the desire to be seen as bigger or better, not self-seeking. Next question here, why do we need forbearance? Uh, there are at least three reasons why we need to develop this quality. So if I had my whiteboard, I'd be filling in the blanks right now. Okay, we need, uh, why do we need forbearance? One, we need forbearance to be like Jesus. 2 Corinthians 10.1, Paul says, I appeal to you with the gentleness and kindness of Christ. See, the Corinthians were being uh, overly bold and pushy and challenging Paul's authority as an apostle. Uh, Paul could have come to them and put them in their place, but instead he chose to challenge them to act like Christ, uh, who Christ could have asserted his rights as the son of God, but instead chose to give up his life for us. If we want to be like Jesus, we can't fight for our every right, but instead graciously yield our rights for the sake of others. Uh, number two, we need forbearance to have God's joy and peace. Last week, we read Philippians 4.4. 4. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, here's the thing. These two verses are connected. How many times uh, have we allowed somebody to steal our joy? Because we allowed them to get under our skin, to irritate us, or even make us angry. That person that you answered the question about at the beginning, uh, for the, during the question of the day, that's who you're thinking about right now. How many times have they stolen your joy? How many times have they gotten under your skin? How many times have they irritated you? How many times have they just flat made you angry? Uh, anger has a way of stealing our joy, uh, especially our joy in the Lord. It's impossible to have anger for man and joy for the Lord at the same time. It can't be done. That's why these two verses connect together. Rejoice in the Lord always and show everyone gentleness and kindness, or the word we're using this morning, forbearance.
Okay, I want you to know what I'm not saying is that we need to allow people to walk all over us. What I am saying is that the definition of love covers a whole lot of wrong. Uh, if someone truly has wronged you, confront them, but do it biblically. And here's the, the big part of this, right? When you confront somebody, confront them with the intention of offering forgiveness. That's a mistake that we make a lot in life. Often when we confront somebody, we do it because we wanna prove our point. We wanna prove that we were right. We wanna prove that we've been wronged. Instead, when we confront somebody, it sure looks differently if we do it biblically and in, in a loving way. And what that means is that when we do it, we confront them with the intention of offering forgiveness with reconciliation. Number three, we need forbearance to get along with others. Uh, no matter which translation we use of verse five, all of them say that we need to show graciousness, gentleness, forbearance to all, to everyone. Jesus gave us two commands, right? First one, love the Lord your God with everything that you have, heart, mind, soul, strength. Two, love your neighbors. In other words, oh, sorry, skipped ahead. When we offer forbearance, when we offer grace, kindness, gentleness, we offer God-like love to others. In other words, what this means is our actions claim that God is still sitting on the throne. But when we choose to withhold forbearance, when we withhold graciousness, gentleness, kindness, what we're saying is that we've taken love away and we've put us on the throne. We've made us, our selfish desires, our God in the moment, instead of allowing God to be on the throne and let love work through the situation. 1 Corinthians 13, seven, it says, love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and it endures every circumstance. All right, how do we practice forbearance without getting trampled on or without compromising the truth? Number one, remember that you are accountable first and foremost to God, not to other people. You are the Lord's servant or steward, and one day you will give an account to him for how you spent your time, your money, and how you used your spiritual gifts. He entrusted these things to you. You can't allow pushy people to determine your schedule or your priorities. Jesus was forbearing, but he didn't allow others to dictate his ministry. Challenge you guys, look up Mark chapter 1, verses 35 through 39, or John chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. Sometimes Paul stood up for his rights, but his motive was not self-love. Uh, but instead, his motive was love for the gospel. Uh, you can look up these stories. Acts chapter 16, 35 through 40, or chapter 25, verse 11. There are times when it is not loving to let an aggressive person continue walking all over you and everyone else. The loving thing is to confront that person and not allow them to dominate you. But like I was saying before, check your motives. What are your motives? Is it to prove yourself right or is it to offer forgiveness and reconciliation? Number two, we need to learn to discern the essential from the peripheral. Don't bend on essentials, give room on the peripherals. Um, I'm gonna read this just so it's kind of clear. Through a growing knowledge of God's word, which is our only standard for truth, we must learn to discern what doctrines are essential to the faith and which are less crucial. What methods are so uh, what methods are so wrong biblically that they must be discarded and which ones are tolerable even though not perfect? What behaviors will shipwreck a person's faith 
and which are perhaps not desirable, uh, and you hope the person will grow out of them, but they aren't going to destroy that person at the moment. Uh, your goal is to love the other person. Biblical love always seeks the highest good of the one loved, namely that the person grow to be like Christ. Uh, as we can read in Philippians 1 verse 9, love must be coupled with discernment or it's not love at all. All right, to kind of go back to that idea of uh, the things that are understanding what's essential, and what's peripheral. Um, one of the things, ways I've always looked at it is this way. There are elements of our faith that are closed hand theology and there's elements of our faith that are open hand theology. See, the things in the, in the closed hand are the things that are indisputable, that God is God, that God is three in one, that God created us, right? That he sent his son to die for us and that without that death and resurrection, we can't be offered grace and salvation and that we have eternity waiting for those who believe in him. Open hand, these are other ideas, things that Christians can be on both sides of the fence on, um, but can enter into healthy debate. Right? So that's kind of what that means. Forbearance, like love, must be coupled with biblical discernment. Number three, remember that growth is a lifelong process. I hope you are still growing in your faith. That's why here with our youth group, it's, it's nowhere to now here. It's a story of the journey of faith. Right? When we come to know Christ, we don't just automatically uh, know everything. We, we don't become the perfect Christian. Instead, the Holy Spirit comes, um, indwells us, and slowly works on one area at a time. If you have to deal with an irritating person, uh, show them as much grace as God has shown you. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, did you catch that? Right? Show them as much grace as God has shown you. How much grace has God offered you? How many times have you not earned it or deserved it? That's the way that we should treat others. Love other people like God loves us. If a guy is coming from a difficult background, it may take time for him to learn to be sensitive and loving to others. Um, you've got to model love as you work with a difficult person giving him room to grow. Remember, God didn't dump the whole load all on you at once, right? The moment that you decided to become a Christian, he didn't say, here, here's my Bible, learn every single word, and when you have this mastered, then come back to me. No, he said, here I am, I take you as you are, faults in everything, now here's my word, here's my truth, let's go through it together and see what I can do in your life. God is patient. He tolerates our weakness. Uh, but he still confronts us when we're able to bear it, moving us ahead in a process of becoming godly, in a process of becoming righteous, of becoming right with God. Uh, we have to show that same Kind of grace to other people. All right, guys, I'm going to end with uh, a story. So at the 1965 Wimbledon tennis finals, okay, if you're not a tennis fan, Wimbledon, it's, it's the biggest uh, of the tennis master events, all right? Uh, and a linesman called Fault. Now, this is before video, uh, instant replay, so the linesman called fault on a player's second serve, saying that the ball, when it was served, that it landed out of bounds. The player was sure that his serve had been within the line, so he protested to the umpire, but the umpire upheld the, linesman, uh, the linesman's call. The server then lost the point, but his opponent was also certain that the serve had been fair and that he should have lost the point. So on the next serve, this is what happened. The guy who just had the point taken away from him, he was get, uh, or point given to him, right? Or sorry, he had the point taken away from him. 
something he didn't deserve, uh, gets up, he serves the ball, the guy on the other side who just earned a point that he didn't even feel like he deserved, decided to just stand there, let the ball bounce in and go right past him. Giving up the point, thus calling it even, giving grace to the officials, offering uh, uh, reconciliation to his opponent. But that was a moment of forbearance. It's in that moment that he chose gentleness and kindness. See, you can be right and still be wrong if you fail to practice the Christian grace of forbearance. You can be right and still be wrong if you fail to practice the Christian grace of forbearance. Guys, here's uh, some follow-up discussion questions which uh, I'll also post in our Hangout ch uh, chat room so that you guys can uh, look through, talk about, think about. Uh, we can have some conversation about this. So uh, number one, uh, how do we practice forbearance without getting sloppy about sin? How do we show grace and yet hold to godly standards? Number two, how do we know when to absorb a wrong against us or maybe just an irritation and when to confront it? Number three, is it ever right for a Christian to be assertive and stand up for his rights? If so, when? And then number four, how do we determine whether a problem is essential or peripheral? Are there shades of gray in between? Just some thoughts to think about, guys. Hey, if I'm going to just challenge you with anything right here at the end, I just want to challenge you guys um, to show love, uh, to offer grace. It's, it's really easy. It's our, um, our human nature wants to be right all the time, even when we know that we're wrong. Is that really the thing that we want? Uh, are we willing to fight to the death to be right and in the process lose the right to speak life into somebody else? Um, at what point do we need to take us off the throne and put God back on it? Uh, is our love for ourselves going to be greater than our love for others? For God so loved us so much. In that while we were still sinners, in that while we were still his enemies, he chose to send his son to pay our price, to pray to pay what we owed, so that we could be offered forbearance, grace, and enter into eternal relationship with him. How much grace? Has God offered you? How much grace should we offer to others? Hey, it's challenging to be a Christian. It's challenging to stand up for what's right. But guys, I know you can do it. I've seen God work in all of your lives. Um, and you guys are amazing. And so keep going and keep growing. Hey, I love you guys. Hopefully we can continue some of this discussion uh, in Hangouts. And I look forward to seeing you on Zoom later this week. Uh, I also believe that uh, we've got a few uh, things coming up this week. If I'm not mistaken, I think Julia is going to be holding a all youth uh, special Zoom uh, scavenger hunt. All right, I don't really know how it's gonna work yet. We were talking about it and she said she was gonna run with it. So stay tuned, we'll get that information out to you guys, but let's close in prayer. God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for uh, your patience with us. God, I know that, God, I know that I don't deserve as much grace as you've offered. God, I know that there are many times that I have done nothing to earn it. But Father, I pray that I would choose to receive it, to acknowledge it, and that through the your uh, strength that I would be able to show that same kind of love to other people by offering grace and patience and mercy. And with our word today, 
forbearance. And so, God, I pray that in last week's message and this week's message that we would know how to rejoice in you always uh, and then also show gentleness and kindness to everyone around. God, we love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys later this week.